Last time on Lord Bento. Well, that's over with. Now, can you all just go, please, so I can get back to what I was supposed to do? Fine. Until next video. See you then. And now here's that video. DreamWorks, an animation company to rival such juggernauts in the film industry like Disney, Warner Bros, and Sony Pictures Animation. Birthed from one of the former Disney chairmen who brought us such classics as Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. No, not those ones. DreamWorks has quite the resume of making pretty damn good movies that cover many different types of stories. You got Madagascar, How to Train Your Dragon, The Road to El Dorado, The Prince of Egypt, that one Captain Underpants movie, and Ants! Fucking Ants! And of course, everybody's favorite... Sh Shark Tale. <laughs> However, there was one movie in particular that caught my attention the most growing up. And that movie was Kung Fu Panda. Considering it was made by DreamWorks, an American animation studio, Kung Fu Panda was a unique take on the martial arts narrative, specifically the wuxia genre. From the characters and setting to the story and the fight scenes, it's clear to see that the film's overall concept and direction was inspired by the likes of Kung Fu Hustle, Hero, and even Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. In most of these films, you have two main things that they all have in common. Martial artists, and ancient China. The story usually follows as so. The martial artist goes on a journey throughout ancient China to find and defeat another martial artist who's a strong rival, usually someone who's killed their family member, or is generally just one bad mutter hubber. What makes Kung Fu Panda interesting is having the different Kung Fu styles in this world of martial arts being represented by the actual animal they are based off of. The snake character uses the snake style, the monkey character uses the monkey style, the crane uses the crane, and so on and so forth. Having this element of your heroes being portrayed by the actual animals of the kung fu styles they are using makes for quite a unique take on the genre. Yeah, in fact, the idea was so unique that they went back in time to the 90s to do it all over again for a video game. Yeah. Well, to be more accurate, Kung Fu Panda was actually DreamWorks' second crack at the concept. Their first notable attempt was this game, Typhoo Wrath of the Tiger. Typhoo was a game released back in 1999 for the Sony PlayStation, published by Activision and developed by DreamWorks Interactive, who later became known as Danger Close Games, who you might know as the folks who were responsible for the Medal of Honor series. Hi there, I'm Bento. Late introduction, I know. And this is Typhoo Wrath of the Tiger for the PlayStation 1. After you sit through the boot up of the game and see this kid totally get vibe checked, you are greeted with the game's title screen. Well, I'd like to say that, but instead of a greeting, it's more of a yelling out of fucking nowhere. Typhoo is an action beat-em-up game set in a fictionalized version of ancient China, where all the characters are animals. You play as the titular Typhoo, an anthropomorphic tiger who is the last of his kind, following him along as he goes on a journey to defeat the evil Dragon Master and put a stop to his corrupt reign. The game begins as the Dragon Master and his snake army infiltrate a Panda Clan temple in search of Tai so they can kill him. After cleaving through Panda from Tekken over here, what you say? They finally find Tai, and the Dragon Master just kicks the shit out of him, and zaps him with... Lightning, I think, and leaves him for dead. After coming to, Tai wakes up to all the destruction that the Dragon Master had left behind, with the temple in ruins and several panda monks being slaughtered. Feeling responsible for what had happened, he vows that he will defeat the Dragon Master and make him answer for the important question of, why? Why me? Taking the wise advice of not Po, Tai sets off on his journey to defeat the Dragon Master, visiting the other masters of the other clans to find clues as to why the Dragon Master wanted him dead, and to learn more about his own seemingly forgotten past. As far as the story is presented in this cutscene, it's pretty simplistic. Some guy kicked your butt. Why? 
I don't know. Figure it out over there and kick his ass. I'm pretty sure the game has some more lore info in its manual, just like the other games in this generation of games. But you know, I don't have that shit. Because I'm a dumbass. As stated before, Typhoon is an action game featuring beat em up type gameplay, similar to the likes of Final Fight and Streets of Rage, with 3D platforming. You move on a 3D plane, with the camera being fixed slightly angled from the top looking down, being able to move forward, backward, up, down, and diagonally with the D-pad and analog stick. As you move along the map, the camera follows you accordingly, seemingly on rails. You also have two meters on the top of the screen to look out for, your green health meter that monitors how much health you have left, and your blue chi meter that gets used up each time you use a special move. You got your face buttons doing different things too, with square being attack, triangle to block, circle to grab, and X to jump. Using a combination of the square and triangle buttons, you can do combos. When prompted at the top of the screen where your health gauge is, you can press the triangle button at the end of a chain of attacks from the square button to do a combo. You also got the ability to duck map to R1, taunting to R2, chi blasts to L1, and to check your status and inventory to L2. It's a relatively simple control scheme. And along with the relatively simple control scheme, you got a relatively simple game progression. As in any other beat-em-up, you fight through a bunch of bad guys in a linear fashion, getting to a goal point at the end of each level. Which in this game is literally cash money. Huh. Didn't know that's what those things were called. After every level, you are brought to Ty standing on a detailed map of the land, kind of like an overworld, if you will. And each time you're brought to it, Ty moves from one location to the next signifying progression from one level to another. Every few of these levels or so are seemingly bundled together in terms of what types of enemies appear and the location, both of which are usually related to the boss of the area. For you see, the bosses of each area half the time are one of the masters from one of the other clans, the clans being the Mantis, Leopard, Monkey, and Crane, just to name a few. The other half of the time, the bosses are the big boys of one of the lesser clans who serve the Dragon Master, such as the Snake, Rat, and Boar clans. To reach them, first you gotta deal with the respective henchmen. The Master of the Leopard Clan has his own Leopard Lackeys, the Monkey Clan's Master got his own Monkey Minions, the Cranes got her Cranelings, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not fighting any of the other clans, your main enemy mostly consists of snakes. Lots and lots of snakes. You got snakes in a forest, snakes in a jungle, snakes on a hill, snakes in a temple, snakes in a valley, and even snakes in a gauntlet. All that's missing is some snakes on a plane and we're golden if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> More often than not, snakes are mainly reserved for being the main enemy throughout the entire game, with the rat and boar clan swapping them out for like three or four levels tops. The minions in every clan come in all shapes and sizes. For most of the clans, there are usually two variations. A standard brawler type that's more common, and then one special type that has a weird quirk to them. Special variants range from big ol' bruisers to projectile throwing asshats, depending on which clan you're facing. Usually there are only one or two types of special variants for each clan, so you'll never run into both a tank character and a ranged character in the same clan. However, the Snake Clan actually has more than one or two special variants. They got thin snakes, snakes that have weapons, snakes that breathe fire, buff snakes that sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> buffer snakes that sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and even bigger buffer snakes that sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> As previously mentioned, you progress through the levels in a linear fashion. You get from point A to point B, beating up whoever gets in your way. Plain and simple. On your way to the goal of each level, the game will occasionally throw you a challenge section that requires you to beat up a certain number of enemies before letting you move on to the next area. Thankfully, the areas of the level you get locked to for these challenge segments aren't static and bland at all. The majority of the environments you come across through playing the game are colorful and detailed even for a PS1 title, taking place across various locales. From bright, vibrant forests and temples, to dark, foreboding fortresses and dungeons, each level is never the same as the previous, and all are unique from each other in their own way. The music that also accompanies said stages are pretty great too. They fit with the overall atmosphere and tone of each level. 
bundled together with some stellar sound effects that go along with anything you do in the game. The crunching of the leaves beneath your feet as you walk on them. The sounds of the birds chirping and various other wildlife littered throughout the level. The halo-ish energy sound effects that play every time you hold taunt and respawn after death. Bring it on! <laughs> And of course, the fight sounds. <laughs> Speaking of sounds and such, the voice acting in this game is not bad at all. Yeah, I said it. There's voice acting in this game. And a bunch of it. Every single cutscene in this game is voice acted. And they're all pretty damn good. Especially Ty's voice actor, John DiMaggio. These days, you might know John from his other bigger roles, such as Marcus Phoenix, Jake the Dog, and... Tiny Tiger? Huh. Small world. Considering that this is one of, if not his first major role in a video game, from the battle grunts to the dialogue of the cutscenes, he was alright. Look what time spent caring for me has brought you and the temple. Leopard Clan, huh? Well, they'll never guess who's coming to dinner. Thank you, Honorable Leopard Master. My compliments to your daughter on her athletic prowess. She has quite the kung fu grip. Yeah, right. There are also several pickups and collectibles sprinkled throughout each level that help you along your journey. They aren't really unlockables or extras or anything like that, but rather are for helping you out directly, consisting of items such as health, extra lives, and even different chi powers based on different elements and abilities, such as an energy shockwave or meteor strikes. There are also pickups for invisibility and invincibility, both of which eat away at your chi meter. Once you run out of chi meter, you lose the power up. Good for when you have plenty of chi to burn, bad for when you don't. This isn't a problem for the first couple of levels, as your chi meter is practically non-existent. You can't even use the chi blast yet. When you press L1, Ty just looks like he caught a stroke. <laughs> Only when you beat the first boss, Ty will learn the basics of Chi from the Mantis Master, who grants you the use of the Chi Blast, extending your Chi Meter greatly for the first time. If you use up all your Chi by either using a lot of Chi Blasts, or after a power-up's time is over, you can gain back Chi by finishing your combos off with the Triangle Button. You can also fully replenish it instantly with a Chi Power-Up Pickup, although it does change the type of Chi Blast you will do when you press the Chi Blast button. Thankfully, as you progress through the game, both your health and chi meter extend after every boss fight or so. So you aren't always going to have a bad time trying to manage how much life and chi you have left every so often. Additionally, there are pieces of jade scattered around the map as collectibles. They don't really act like money to buy things from an in-game shop, but rather, they just give you an extra life if you collect 100 pieces. Kinda like the wampa fruit in Crash Bandicoot. Alternatively, you can get an extra life if you defeat 25 jobbers, so there's that just in case. And with that, you kinda just do that over and over again until you come across a boss, which are the masters of one of the other clans themselves, or some other guy that's guarding them or something. After kicking their ass, you are then told some important information about either the pass, the dragon master, or both, and get taught a new ability for you to use in your journey along the way. Most of them mainly offer new ways to traverse through levels. One of the best stuff you learn is from the Leopard Clan, where you gain the ability to run on all fours like a leopard by double tapping the direction you want to go in, as well as the ability to do a full combo from it. It's pretty damn useful overall. Also, the sound Ty makes when you do a combo ender from the Leopard Run is just fantastic. <laughs> Though my personal favorite is the last thing you ever learn, which is basically a fucking Shoryuken. Or in this case, I guess it's more of a tiger uppercut. It goes through almost anything, does big ass damage, and can even one-shot some of the grunts. And as an added bonus, after meeting each master, the way Tai traverses through the map changes to reflect the master he just came across. Oh, that's cute. However, the more you play the game, the more you notice certain things. Guarding is kind of finicky and sometimes doesn't really work. You'd be trying to guard against a boss's attack string and then still get hit. What's the point of even blocking when you still take damage as if you didn't block? In addition, the hit detection in this game is weird. Sometimes you can hit the enemy, sometimes you can't and you whiff, 
So the combo, you were trying to do drops, and you gotta do the whole string all over again. But it's alright, because it doesn't really matter if you drop it or not. You can just mash out your combos until they connect, and the AI will still let it happen. In fact, his basic combo structure is so good that you can play most of the story through without utilizing any of the new offensive strategies and techniques that the other masters give you. If you just mash out square into triangle, you'll win like 95% of your fights. And remember when I said how the game has platforming? Well, while the first quarter or so of the game doesn't have much in that front, after the first boss, platforming starts to become more of a thing to do, with it reaching its highest point as soon as you hit the halfway point of the game. And it stays high. Y you know, I'm a big fan of platformers myself. I'm just not a big fan of platforms that have the collision detection of a needle tip that coated with butter. You have to land dead fucking center of the platform, or else you'll slip right off and fall. Sometimes you don't even have to be platforming to just slip off and fucking die. And with the addition of the new techniques obtained from the other masters in the later levels, the platforming can get tricky, specifically at the halfway point, since you now gotta incorporate those new moves into your platforming skills. This is especially the case with the flying crane technique. You see, to use it, after you first get it from the crane master of course, you have to jump first and then press and hold the jump again to fly like a crane. Something like this should be godsend, considering the platform was kind of already wonky. However, the duration of the ability is short. And when I say short, I do mean short. Like, take this stage for example. To get across this gap, you need to use the crane gliding ability. But the duration of the glide is so small that you end up just dying at the midpoint of the gap. I've tried positioning myself at the very edge of the cliff before jumping, and even delaying the glide until the last possible second of the jump. But I still kept dying. What do I do? Well, what you're supposed to do is to mash on the jump button after the initial jump instead of holding it. So you space out the glide frames and fly a greater distance. Why did it take me 20 lives and a YouTube search of a let's play of this level to figure it out? <laughs> Don't even get me started with the monkey roll and that monkey business. On top of that, the chi ball platforming becomes more and more apparent, requiring you to use up some chi to activate some platforms that you need to progress through the stage. If you ain't got chi, then tough luck trying to find some enemies to combo back your chi or a chi ball refill nearby, cause if not, Guess you gotta kill yourself and start back over to the last checkpoint to get all your chi back. Also, did I forget to mention that the game is short? The game isn't that difficult and pretty straightforward to boot. It took me around 4 hours to beat the whole thing, from the start of the Panda Temple to the finale of Shoryukening, the big ass dragon. Probably could have even shaved off an hour if I didn't keep dying at that stupid snow gap section. Now while I do have my problems with it, as explained just now, these aren't really that game breaking. They're just really damn annoying. All that aside, Typhoo is a pretty fun and unique experience. A 3D based action platformer about an anthropomorphic animal beating the shit out of other anthropomorphic animals using kung fu in ancient China? On the PS1? Sign me up! Easy to pick up controls, a colorful cast of characters and scenery, and a pretty sound story that's told through voice acted cutscenes make for an easy recommendation from me. Sure it's not perfect, but it's not an awful game either. In fact, I'd go far as to say that this is a hidden gem on the PS1. Play this game if you haven't already. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Uh, I was hoping to cover this game first before Kensei, but <laughs> things happen, so yeah. Anyways, I want to thank you all for watching, and until the next video, I'll see you then.